Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There you go. <laughs> Can I be on the t-shirt? I want to be on the t-shirt. <laughs> Hi, this is Connor from Raising Awesome. I'm here with Walnut, and we're going to talk about the making of Young Dave. Hello, everybody. Dave is Dave Jones from EEV Blog. He gave us the opportunity to upload a guest video. And so in our guest video, we actually did a, a retro build of an Apple One computer, but made it twice as fast and all that kind of good stuff. He offered to uh, let us do that while he was on a walkabout in Australia. What did we do in the video? The video started out with me in his lab, but we sort of edited it so it looked older, more 75. <laughs> so we started out the video with me in his lab room he has. Um, we used some green screen effects like the lava lamp there to the left and cut his rocket down just in size so it looked more like it was unfinished and more 70s I guess. The chalkboard was just a green screen effect for the background that we drew on a little. So here we're in the mailbag room. Yeah, and I think he has one more. Yep, that's his main electronics lab or whatever you call that that he, uh, he works in. So let's talk through how we pulled this off in the making of young Dave. Because so, Dave, Dave would have been your age back in the late 70s, somewhere around there. So he would have been probably very enthused about the Apple One and all that that had come out. Then. So that, that was the first premise of the whole video was what was going on back then. And one comical thing was that Star Wars had just come out with uh, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. And then here we were in 2017 with Star Wars coming out with Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher, <laughs> which was kind of wild. But we knew um, we couldn't just overlay into his modern era because some of these things hadn't even been around yet, like uh, plastic water bottles. But this is a very familiar room that he does his EEV blog from. And you notice his body's in the picture. So one of the things we had to do right off the bat was get him out of there. So there's all kinds of ways to get him out of there. But the one thing we did in this case was uh, use Blender. Tell him a little bit about Blender, the software. Blender is a free program. It's very nice, but it's also incredibly hard to use. You can make video game assets with it. You can animate. You can make movie effects, green screen effects, pretty much anything of that sort you can make with Blender. Yeah, it is very awesome, very free, it's open source, and like Connor said, uh, you, you could actually make movies with it. You could make a Toy Story or you could even make, make effects to complement real life kind of movies, explosions and different things like that. So what we did, we, we, we went and just Googled that poster in the background, just went to Google Images or images.google.com and boom it was the very first hit brought it into blender and laid it as a texture on a cube and from that we were able to do a render uh, to render that onto onto that cube uh, and adjust lighting and different things and then simply just paste it over him pasted that over top of it. didn't get the lighting perfect but that was okay because we we're gonna stick so many old camera effects over right. there anyway uh, but then we took a uh, uh, what you see here, CyberLink Power Director, it's for video editing. We took the Photo Director, that is another component of it, and we just kind of did what people would call Photoshopping, where we kind of rubbed out certain things, like we rubbed out this rocket here, we rubbed out his uh, his hairline there. It would move around and, and, and things in the video. So the quickest way was just paste over this this poster and then rub out his hair there and then we had we had our backdrop now his shoulder I because we had this going on and his shoulder was here I had to do some tricks around that uh, just simply copy and pasting this section here and pasting it back down here a couple times was enough to trick the eye for someone and then we touched it up we pasted in this stagnant lava lamp in there because in the 70s lava lamps were the cool thing right they're actually pretty cool now too yeah. don't, don't, uh, don't use them much and then you see the rocket we topped that off I just uh, put an ellipse on top of it in a paint program. The paint program I used to, to do a lot of erasing and things called paint.net. It's a free program, kind of like Blender, a uh, totally free program that's just uh, for editing uh, pictures. So it's a lot like MS Paint, but way better in that it lets you layer images on top of one another. So the lava lamp, that would have looked funny just sitting there on its own. If you go to YouTube, you'll find all these neat green screen effects for free and you can download them with keep vid and you see here that it's green screen lava lamp somebody filmed the lava lamp and somehow 
uh, made it go to green screen just by resizing it down and then doing what's called the chroma key and that's where you select the color that to, to turn transparent uh, was able just to paste that over the composite and so now you see all this together you got the just now this is just an image that's all been edited upon you got the lava lamp here that's just a picture layered on top of the rest but then you have this composited on top of that and uh, because I'm recording right now the computer is super slow to show this but if you watch the video over on EEV blog you'll see the lava lamp actually in motion through there uh, you also notice that there is a shadow cast back here that's also in the cyberlink software it allows you to set a light source direction and a shadow distance so you can actually render out a shadow on objects that weren't there the chalkboard you were just again standing in front of the green screen talking um, let's get this and you notice when you're, you're talking you notice that you were casting a shadow on the green screen when you film green screen you do not want a shadow showing in the background you want to render that shadow otherwise you're going to get all kind of weird artifacts in that shadow and you'll you'll see that in our video but of course we put all those old movie effects over yeah, top yeah. of it and it looked like it was okay we just got another again a free image on images.google.com of the chalkboard and you can see how the green screen placed itself and the shadow went with it that it, it didn't recognize so it didn't look too bad. As far as the writing that was showing up on the chalkboard, that was simply taking that image and then taking this paint.net that lets you layer on top of the image so that if I needed to tweak something or move it around or resize it, I could do that on, on a layer by layer basis, uh, which worked out very well. You see here, I just made two quick layers in it. You got one there uh, that you can mess with and it won't actually draw onto the other layer so uh, you notice I can I can hide that layer hide the other layer and so then I was able to make multiple layers and introduce those uh, one at a time in the video that's pretty neat that's pretty straightforward uh, biggest lesson again is all these shadows got to got to take care of those if you're going to do this with high res uh, kind of high res high def video so there's the mailbag and there's this big old knife that he has. The biggest challenge on this one really was the, you couldn't just Google for a picture of what's behind him. Right. He was always in, in the way, but luckily Dave is very energetic. So he bobbed and weaved so much that I was able to simply hit the snapshot button here and I got uh, probably about 12 snapshots of him moving around, oh, which yeah. exposed more background. I took those 12 over into paint.net and I would lay, I layered them all out, and then I would copy with this magic tool here, the, um, see the lasso select? I would trace around his body, and then I'd come back and uh, take that, which was good stuff, I'd trace outside of his body, right. and I'd take that good stuff and go back to the very first layer and paste it over it. Oh, Eventually, okay. I did that until he thinned out and you see in this picture here, right now you think he's gone, but really he's actually there. You see right there? Uh, is that his shirt? Back? Yeah, that's his shirt. That's yeah. what was left of Dave by the time I did all that because he moved around so much. But also, what I did, I copied the, um, you see all the, like this box here? I, I simply like took this box and copied and pasted it in different places. So what's behind here, I have no clue what he actually be, has behind there. I, the, for all I know, uh, there, there's no telling what he has behind him in that, that room. But uh, to fill in a lot of places where I was afraid that as you moved around, I just copied and pasted the clutter. And, and uh, to the eye, as you watch the video, you just don't even catch that. When it all composited together, there you are sitting at the table. And uh, again, you know, you're kind of blocking a lot of things, but now you can bob and weave every which way <laughs> and people won't get distracted by suddenly seeing Dave <laughs> you know, right there. And you see how the green looks like the floor and that's just an optical illusion because of the way we did this table and I, I was a little sloppy setting up the camera. I didn't, I should have got it, all the lines just right in there. Of course, we're doing this with little cheap cameras in the basement <laughs> and uh, so it didn't turn out too bad for it. Now, one thing that was hard when you raised your arms We'll see, right? It's coming up. Look at the shadows that are being cast. Oh, 
Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was tough because there was nothing behind you. You know, you're in the room. There's nothing behind you. It wasn't your fault. Is because I didn't light your green screen uh, well. You know, we didn't right. take the time for that. So that's where Blender came in handy. Blender will let you trace a body as a mask. And you can basically trace and cut out the human or, or leave the human there, but put a mask on there where it won't even consider anything here. It'll just call it transparent. Okay, here we go. This was at the end of it. At the end, there was a lot of shadows at the very end of the uh, video green screen where you were simply standing in the house. And you can see how this is outlining you. So what I had to do, I added all these little vertices around your body. The stuff in the center here, in the chest, are markers that are designed to follow you as you move. So I'll hit play here, and what these markers do, you, you put all these little vertices, make them parents, and as you move, all those dots will go with you. Unfortunately, they won't move the arms, so what I have to do is called keyframing. You remember what keyframing is? Isn't that where you just sort of snapshot one setting for a single frame, and then it just sort of tracks it to the next keyframe? Right, it, it'll interpolate in between. So, so let's say you go from here all the way over here. I can move all these all these uh, vertices around, snapshot it, and then I can chain, move all those vertices over here at the end of it, and it will interpolate for maybe there's a thousand frames between this one and that one. The computer will fill in the motion for you going all the way over. Right. The bummer is as you move your arms and stuff, you'll find oh nope he's hitting there hitting hitting there, uh, so then you have to stop it wherever there's a problem and uh, and fix it. So let's see if we can get this um, this to show how the computer uh, does interprets the keyframing. You see it going there? And so wherever you see it suddenly tweak away, that's me adjusting at that frame because I saw a collision. But all those dots moving to the left, it did it as you see what these tracers that red line and the blue line. The red's where it was, blue's where it's going. Uh, it actually computed all that movement that you saw there. Where you saw it kind of wiggling around your elbow and stuff, that was me manually stopping at that frame and adjusting because I saw, uh-oh, you're colliding at that point. And so, so, but what this mask is doing for me is everything outside of the mask is gonna be transparent. Like you see up top here, everything's transparent because, um, because it's outside of that mass. And then what is within that that boundary of the mass is still being chroma keyed right. out, you know. So you'll still see artifacts like right there, you see in your arm where there's shadow oh, the there. Shadows, yeah. Those shadows are going to be artifacts. I'd have to go in and put a lot more vertices to take that out. So it comes back to it is easier to reshoot to a lit green screen than it is to go in here and try to, try to take that all out. Right. But if you only had a little, little thing you wanted to touch up, it, uh, Blender is an awesome tool for being able to do that. Now how could we get rid of all the, uh, the wrinkles? So the wrinkles, it's pulling it tighter. Uh, you know, the, our, ours was just up there in, on an on unfinished basement wall. <laughs> if we pulled that really tight from every direction, we would have got the wrinkles out. And then as far as the, the shadows behind you, that was just a matter of getting some lights from the side shining on it, and then you stepping forward away from oh, it so that yeah. the, the overhead light wouldn't put that angle on you. But then, I wouldn't have been able to learn Blender and then show you. Right. So, <laughs> so that, that was the fun of uh, doing all that. This video would have been a lot more boring if that happened. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, we would have said, yeah, just buy Cyberlink. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Cyberlink alone could not uh, address those shadows. Um, okay, so then after Mailbag, we went into his actual electronics lab. Same, same situation there. Uh, Dave... Uh, this is his uh, how to entertain a nerd video. <laughs> he moved around so much in that one. I was able to skinny him way down to a point where then, like right at some point, he, he dodged around so much that I was able to copy one of his little part spins back there. And, uh, and from that, I was able to just copy and paste. You see how all <laughs> this stuff is copy and paste? That piece of paper really stopped around here. I just copied and pasted that paper, made it look like one long sheet of paper. I copied uh, his power supplies over here, just boom, boom, boom. All these knobs, this is one of these two. I think it's this one is just a paste over to here because it, he, he was always in the way over here. All these wires are, are, are not real. I just copied that one and brought over these bins, not real. And then if you, if you zoom in real close, you'll see that says 78 on it. 
Yeah, it, it had said something uh, like 17 or something. Uh, going back to the actual project, though, you know, it was very fun making this thing, but we actually did something in the video. We, we made an, uh, made a better than the original Apple One computer, and we couldn't have done that without the knowledge of a gentleman in Great Britain, very nice man. Uh, I, I kind of became his pen pal last year as, um, as I dove into learning how to make an 8-bit uh, PC and he, he uh, educated me on how to make the PC. So you can go to his website, you'll have that here at the end of the video. And he has all kinds of different little designs that he has for making 8-bit PC. So if it wasn't for co collaborating with him, I would not uh, have had a clue how to, to make an 8-bit computer and then bestow that onto you. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that, that's pretty much how we built this thing, you know, blenderpaint.net. And then uh, I guess the main thing, the big point of this, this video for us at Raising Awesome is about mentorship. When I was a kid, you had a few mentors. A lot of times they were teachers, or like my, one of mine was a guitar teacher. He was a great mentor. But it was really few and far between. You know, a lot of people, they're human. They're not all perfect, so they're good mentors in one aspect, but they may not bring it all. Uh, they may let you down from time to time and different things like that. What's neat about this world we're living in now is, particularly like through YouTube, you can have mentors uh, in Australia, you can have mentors in Britain, and what's amazing about it is, with the technology, you can comment and collaborate with them and you never meet, and it is just an incredible relationship. And so for you, now that you've turned 13, definitely in your life, you, you should always seek positive good mentors you know that are out there uh you gotta be safe with it but seek positive good mentors through your life here i am at, at what 45 and, and and now dave jones is i consider is a mentor to me towards this field of interest here so it's great to have mentors it's never been a better time on life to do that and learn and grow from individuals there's no doubt thanks for watching please like and subscribe for more fun and inspirational content Okay, and the chalkboard's that way. Yeah. Why is that thing flashing? Ooh, that's not good, is it? First, do I look red? I feel like I look red. I just got through banging out pull-ups at the playground. I feel like I look red.